Welcome back. All right, I want to talk about Carolina today. Yep. I want to talk about Carolina because they're noteworthy, and, and I did mention them in the News of the Day video, and I thought, you know what, let's take a look at Carolina. Um, now, Carolina's record in March wasn't bad. 8-7-1 and one is not a bad record. But if you're looking at a team that is gearing up for a potential Stanley Cup run, uh, there are some concerning signs here for Carolina. There are things going on here that over a seven-game series in the first round uh, could be tough. Let's say they end up against the New York Islanders. There's room here for the New York Islanders to shut them down. And it is a question mark I've had with, with Carolina. And with Svechnikovs uh, on the sidelines, that does make it look like Carolina could be easier to knock out. And of course, there's Pacioretty. Uh, Pacioretty only playing a handful of games this year, and then, you know, season-ending injury right after. And so, with all that in play, uh, and the fact that they're only one point clear of the New Jersey Devils currently, so, they're 47-18-9, they have 130 points, they're 4-5-1 and one in their last 10. New Jersey, 47-20-8, they have 102 points, they are 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last 10. The New York Rangers, 7-2-1 in their last 10, but they're 44-21-10. and 10, They have 98 points. So eight points back of Carolina. Carolina has a game in hand. Odds are that five-point lead should hold up there. Uh, they also have a one-game in hand situation on the New Jersey Devils, and New Jersey hasn't been putting up a ton of wins lately either. So it's an interesting situation because overall in the standings, they're number two. Overall, they're the number two team. Then you look at regulation wins. Carolina, I think they're tied for fifth with New Jersey with 35 regulation wins. And the New Rangers have 34. There's very little to choose between Carolina, New Jersey, and the Rangers. And I think in a, in a playoff scenario, people will take the Rangers. You have Igor Shesterkin. You have an exciting offense. You have Adam Fox on the blue line. There's a lot of reasons to like the Rangers in a series against the Canes. But for the Canes this month, I want to go through their 16-game run here. And I want to make this, you know, not quick, quick, but, you know, just go through it. Uh, starting with their loss at Vegas, 3-2. Uh, it was scoreless after 1, 2-1 to Vegas after 2, and then 3-2 to Vegas in the end. Uh, no power plays for Carolina in that game. Uh, the shots, 26-20 to for Carolina. Anderson, 17 saves on 20 shots. Uh, Freddie Anderson's given them some good goaltending at times. I, I don't know if I would favor Anderson in a series against Shesterkin. So uh, then they won at Arizona, 6-1, to one, right after that. Uh, they, they led 2 to nothing after 1. They led 5-1 to one after 2 and 6-1 to one in the end. Uh, the power play went 3-for-3 three three that night. So rough night for the penalty kill for the Coyotes. Uh, shots 42-18 to 18 for Carolina. Antti Ranta saved 17 out of 18 that night. Uh, then they won at home against Tampa, 6-0. So this is one of those no-mercy games, right? Uh, they, they scored two goals in each period to pace themselves to that 6 nothing win. Absolutely plastered Tampa Bay. Uh, their power play, 4 for 5. So that is everything you want as a Carolina fan right there. You beat uh, a team that's been in the finals three years in a row. You absolutely destroy them in doing so, and you don't even allow a goal. So uh, everything goes their way, including the shots, 38-14 to 14 for Carolina. Anderson saved all 14 shots for one of the easier shutouts he's going to get in his career. Uh, then at Montreal, they end up winning it in a shootout, four to three. Uh, they were up, they were down two to one after the first, and down three to two after the second, and tied it in the third. And then in the shootout, they go three for six, Montreal two for six, and they win it four to three there. Uh, power plays, they were zero for two that night, but the shots thirty nine to twenty four, Carolina. Carolina is very good at putting up a bunch of shots and winning in that category, and that is really a staple of a Rod Brindamore coach team. They will get a ton of shots. What's interesting is they get a ton of shots, but you still expect more goals than what you get from Carolina most of the time. So that night was a tough one because Antti Ranta got hurt. He allowed two goals on 10 shots. Freddie Anderson in relief, 13 saves on 14 shots. Uh, then they won at home against Philadelphia. That's a one nothing shutout victory. They scored that goal in the first period and just rode Kachetkov from there. Uh, their power play won for four, so they didn't have a five-on-five -five goal that night. They outshot Philadelphia 29-19. Kachekov saved all 19 shots for the shutout. Not bad. Uh, then they lose 4 nothing against Vegas. Uh, they were down 1 nothing after 1, 2 nothing after 2, and of course 4 nothing in the end, so they allow two more in the third. Their power play 0 for 1, the shots 33-24 for Carolina. So they are leading in shots in every single one of these games. 
Freddie Anderson saves 20 out of 23. And one of those things that's been kind of sticking in the back of my mind is the question on Freddie Anderson and whether or not if he's the starter, and he should be the starter for them to go, going into the playoffs, can he win them a series? And how far can they go? Uh, then they lost 3 nothing at New Jersey. So this is the lack of offense problem that does crop up here and there. Uh, they were down 2 nothing after 1, 3 nothing after 2, lost by that score. They were 0 for 3 on the power play, but they outshot New Jersey 33 to 32 to 23. Now the Devils early in the season, nobody was out shooting them. Uh, that's been a little different in the second half of the season, and I think it's part of the reason why New Jersey doesn't have the gaudy record they had earlier in the year. Uh, Kachekov that night saved 20 out of 23, so he was out dueled at the other end. Uh, then uh, Winnipeg comes to town, and that helps you out, right? You. Uh, go out on the road to New Jersey, you lose that one, you come home, you got Winnipeg waiting for you, and Winnipeg, uh, they lost, uh, the Jets lost, Carolina won by a score of 5-3 to three there, Carolina up one nothing after one, up 3-1 to one after two, and then a bunch of scoring in the third, and ends up being 5-3 to three for Carolina. They're 0-2 for two on the power play in that game, the shot's 25-24 to 24 for Carolina, so close. Uh, Anderson saves 21 out of 24. So, again, you know, you get the win here. That's after a couple of losses. They were outscored 7-0 in those two losses. Vegas and New Jersey are both considered to be contending teams. Then we get over to the second half of the month for them. Uh, so eight games here, eight games here. And it starts with a loss 5-2 at Toronto. They were down 3-1 after one, 4-2 after two. And then Toronto scored one in the third to win at 5-2. Their power play goes 0-3 for three in that game. The shots are 34-24 Carolina. Kachekov, 19 saves on 24 shots. So they outshoot Toronto and, you know, decent enough game, but they lose the game 5-2, to two, right? Uh, then they won at Philadelphia 5-4. to four. That one required overtime. They led 2 to nothing after one, 3-2 to two after the second. It was 4-4 going into overtime, and then they got the shot that matters, the winning goal to go up 5-4 to four there. Their power play, they only had one in that game, and they scored on it. There are times with Carolina they don't draw very many power plays, if any. Um, as evidenced here. <clears throat> and Brenda Moore's talked about it plenty, and I sometimes wonder if Brenda Moore talking about it means you get less calls in the long run, right? So that's that's that that's that balancing line of a coach wanting to say something without saying too much, because if you come across as, as whining or asking for calls, you may not get them. Um, and again, on a player basis, that can happen, bunting in Toronto being the example uh, most recently. So in that game against Philadelphia, they outshoot the Flyers 34 to 33. Freddie Anderson saves 29 out of 33 in that one. Then they win at the New York Rangers 3 to 2. Big win here. They were down one nothing after one, still down one nothing after two. They scored three in the third to win that one 3 to 2. 0 for 1 on the power play. So that's two power plays over two games. Again, Rod Brindamore goes nuts with that stuff. Uh, shots 39 to 31 for Carolina. So well done there. Uh, Anderson, 29 saves on 31 shots. So good start for Freddie Anderson in that one. Then they lost 2-1 to one at home against the Rangers. So that home and home with the Rangers really gives you an idea of just how close these teams are to one another, right? Uh, so they were up one nothing after one. It's 1-1 one, one after two. And then the Rangers scored in the third to make it 2-1. to one. That's your final score. The power play 0-3 for three in that game. Shots 30-16 to 16 for Carolina. So they outshot the Rangers 30-16. to 16. Uh, Anderson saves 14 out of 16 shots. So again, that's one of those things to, to think about is the whole goaltending side of it with the Carolina Hurricanes as we get two weeks down the road from now and we're getting into the playoffs. Then they won 5-3 to three at home against Toronto. Big win, right? Uh, so they were up 2 nothing after 1. It's 2-2 two, two after 2. And then they scored 3 in the third. They end up winning that one 5-3. to three. Their power play 1-2. for two. Uh, Shots 44-28 to 28 Toronto. So this is the first time in all of these games on the board where they're actually outshot. So that is a very rare thing, and they actually won the game. Kachetkov saves 41 out of 44. One question then with Kachetkov is, is he a goaltender that plays better the more shots that he sees? There are instances of this in NHL history. Then you've got Boston. They lose this one in a shootout 4-3. to three. So a shootout loss against Boston, there's no, there's no shame in that, right? Uh, Boston led 1-0 after 1 and 3-1 after 2. Carolina ties that one at 3. And then in the shootout, Boston gets both shots to go in. Carolina gets 0 out of 2. So Boston wins 4-3. The power play, 0-3 for three in that one for Carolina. The shots, 38-37 for Boston. That is the second and only other time that a team has outshot Carolina 
during the month of March. Uh, Freddie Anderson, 35 saves on 38 shots. He had a good game. Uh, Boston, uh, they, they did not ice their top lineup for that game. And, and maybe that helped them. Uh, one thing with Boston, they've had problems with, with motivation, it seems, over this month as well. But maybe throwing in guys that are getting a chance and want to prove that they should be on the roster in the playoffs, maybe that helps them play a little bit better there, right? And then uh, the most recent games are maybe the most alarming. They lose 4 nothing against Tampa. So this is the third time in the month of March that they get shut out by Vegas, by New Jersey, and Tampa. These are quality teams. Carolina should be a quality team too. Uh, they did shut out Tampa here 6 nothing, so can't disregard that. The interesting thing being both of these games in Carolina. Uh, the score in that one against Tampa, 0-0 after one. Tampa scores twice in the second, twice in the third. They win that one 4 nothing. The power play goes 0 for 2. So they're 4 for 5 in this game. They're 0 for 2 in this game. The shot's 31 to 21 for Carolina. Not dissimilar to the shots in this one, but the score very different. Kachetkov saves six, 17 out of 20. I was going to say 16 out of 20. No idea why I'm going to take a, a goal a saved against him. Uh, the fourth goal being an empty netter, right? Because you're you're down three goals, you, you might as well go for it. And then last night they lost three to two at Detroit, and this again felt like they kind of took their foot off the gas. Uh, it was one nothing Detroit after one. It was two to two after two. But when Carolina scored those two quick goals, it kind of felt like yes, this is how it should go. Uh, it stayed tied until there was four seconds left in the game, and Detroit got that goal to end up winning that one 3-2. to two. Uh, The power play 0 for 3 in that one. Shots 33-22 to 22 for Carolina. Anderson 19 saves on 22 shots. So the power play has had, uh, let's see, 4, 6, 9, 11, 14. It's 1 for 14 over their last 16 game, or over their last 6 games, last 16 games. They have one power play goal in their last 16 games. They're done. But in their last, you know, 6 games, one power play goal, you want more than that. Uh, 14 opportunities. You want more than that, too. Uh, the sweet spot seems to be three power plays in a game for a team. They should have a shot at, at getting a, a power play goal out of those three. Um, maybe four. But at this time of year, the penalties usually start coming down. You see more games where both teams have two power plays, maybe three. And that's part of the reason why you'll see the scoring come down in some of those games, too. Because they're not calling everything anymore. And really, power play scoring has been huge this year. So when we look at the numbers in March for these players, there's some alarming trends. So Aho, 16 games, 8 goals, 3 assists, 11 points. The 8 goals is nice, uh, but a minus 7 isn't. So the minus 7 in March is alarming. Natchez is also a minus 7. He has 4 goals, 12 assists, 16 points. So 16 points in 16 games, but also a minus player. So I've talked about plus minus, and I know people don't really like plus minus, but I think it's useful in situations like this. You're looking at a 16-game segment and saying, okay, so who's on the ice when the other team's scoring? There's two things that go on here. Either it's a bad matchup, where a team's figured out how to match up against Ajo and Natchez, or just, you know, the team in general, there's there's a malaise that's going on. The thing is, uh, those minus sevens really kind of stand out. Seth Jarvis is also a minus five. He only has two assists in 16 games. Seth Jarvis, a very talented, very good player who's going through quite the dry spell right now. They could use some goals from him right now. Uh, Jordan Stahl, 16 games, 2 goals, 2 assists. He's a minus 1, so his plus minus is better. We know Stahl's a good defensive forward. Um, I, I, again, 2 goals in 16 games, so that projects out to a 10-goal pace over a full season. They want more than that out of Stahl. Uh, Shea has been very good, 16 games, 5 goals, 3 assists, 8 points. He's on the minus side, too. What stands out to me is Brent Burns, who doesn't get enough credit defensively. So two goals, nine assists, 11 points in 16 games. He has an even plus minus rating. And again, I think that Burns has basically been reborn with the Carolina Hurricanes. And I, th I think that it's helped him on both sides of the ice. Now there's better defensive defensemen in Carolina than what he was playing with in San Jose. And that's part of it. When you're paired up with Slavin, you're paired up with Pesci or... You know, even Chatfield on some level, right? You're paired up with these guys who can play in their own end, and it definitely helps. It would free up Burns to play his game, and I think he's been very good this year. I think this could add years to Burns' career if, if they're able to keep him around. Uh, and then there's Kokanyemi. Let's give Kokanyemi some credit. 16 games, 3 goals, 8 assists, 11 points, plus 4. So he's a plus player, and, and this is where I think there's some legitimacy with that number of plus-minus. You can tell when Kokanyemi's on the ice. That line works very well together. 
Then you've got uh, Jarvis, and right below him is Goss Despair, 15 games, 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points, and a minus 3. It doesn't surprise me that Ghost is a minus because he is known primarily for his power play scoring, right? And that's been the case while he's been in Carolina. I think he has one even strength point. He is a power play guy. He should be on that power play. And probably not played as much five on five, right? Uh, he was playing well in Arizona. But Arizona seems to know how to deploy players in a way that other teams don't. It'd be great to talk to them and see what they do. Uh, but I don't think Ghost uh, has hurt them. I, I just think that it's more of he really helps them on the power play, and, and they need that. They need more power play uh, production from him because it's been it's been a rough time on their power play for the last six games. Uh, Tara Vinen, 15 games, 5 goals, 3 assists, 8 points. He's a plus 1 over that period. Uh, Nason, 16 games, 2 goals, 2 assists, 4 points, and a plus 4. Nason has kind of been a Swiss Army knife for them. He's done a little bit of everything. He's been very impressive. I think this is the best season he's had. Uh, and, and honestly, when they brought him up and it was, well, he played really well in the AHL, I, I honestly kind of rolled my eyes and thought, I don't know, man. Nason's had chances, and I, I don't know that this is going to work. It kind of has. The production isn't where it was in the AHL, but we knew it wouldn't be. The work ethic is there. The defensive play is there. He's a good player. And so it's nice to see Nason, again, another example of a player who's kind of, you know, one of those, is he an NHL or is he not? And he's carved out a spot for himself on one of the top teams in the league. So, of course, that makes him a player that I respect greatly. I've talked about this a lot. The players that I usually end up rooting for are the ones who either were told they couldn't make it or they're players who are right on the cusp and, you know, maybe AHLers a lot of the time. It always throws people off because they're like, what do you mean your favorite players aren't an insert aim of superstar here? Everybody cheers for the superstars. I'm... I'm more focused on the guys who are in that bottom six, the guys who are, you know, fighting, and guys like Nason, who've, who've busted their tails in the AHL for, you know, 50, 60 grand a year, and then they finally get that shot at the NHL level. Uh, Martinuk, 16 games, 3 assists, and a minus 3. Martinuk is not an offensively-minded player like the other guys mentioned at the top here, but again, would you want a goal or two for Martinuk? Absolutely. And then the goaltending. Uh, Kachetkov's been 2-3 and three this month, 892 save percentage. Freddie Anderson... 5-4-1 with an 8.98 save percentage. These are not optimal. You want your, your goaltender to have a save percentage of at least 9.10. Um, I think the average in the NHL is now 9.06. .06, so I think 9.10 is decent. You want 9.10 and higher, right? Uh, and then Ronta, at the time of the injury, he only played in a couple games. 1-0 and with an 8.93 save percentage. But again, he saved 8 out of 10 here, 17 out of 18 here. That's his whole month. Um, and their power play is 19th in the league at 20.4%. In a normal season, a power play at 20%, it's not bad. But this year, now that's not quite good enough. And again, it's been trending in the wrong direction over the last couple of weeks. Uh, they're second on the penalty kill with an 83.6%. That's important come playoff time, having a really good penalty kill. Uh, there are teams that have won without a good power play. It has happened in the National Hockey League, absolutely. Uh, power play isn't everything. But you need to be scoring five on five. And the fact they have three shutouts against them in their last 16 games is kind of a red flag, which is ironic since they have a red flag as their secondary logo. Um, and, and maybe that's a red flag too. Anyways, um, you don't want to keep going down that rabbit hole. and We're too far into this video. But at any rate, uh, this is just one of those things that I wonder about. And, and their goals against average, just for the record, it would be first most seasons. But Boston's goals against average is it? 2.09, which is insane. Those are late 90s numbers. They don't have Hashik. They have Olmark and Swayman. These are these are absolutely ridiculous numbers. And they don't have Berdur in net and New Jersey's defensive uh, schemes. Uh, the shots per game, Carolina's fourth in the league at 34.7, and they're first in shots against at 26.1. All of the numbers tell you Carolina's a really good team and they're a contender. But they've been in this malaise in the month of March. Some of it is that they've had a, a, a pretty rough schedule in places. I will grant them that. But I do wonder whether or not they can turn it on come playoff time. One thing that got mentioned uh, in the Carolina game against Detroit yesterday that I turned my head, something in the commentary that was like, wait, what? And they said there aren't really superstars in this lineup for Carolina. And then they kind of clarified that Natchez, Ajo, sure. Aho can be a superstar. There's a reason that Montreal gave him that, that offer sheet. He absolutely can be a superstar. He could score 50. He could score 100 points. And I mean 50 goals, 100 points. Uh, Natchez. Natchez is an explosive player who even this month with the play being a little down, he's still a point per game. 
Uh, Svechnikov, who I didn't put on the board because his season's done, which definitely impacts her ability to get goals. Svechnikov's a star player in his own right. There are star players in Carolina. One question mark that may be out there is, should Carolina fall early in the playoffs? And I mean round one or round two. And if it comes down to they don't get the goals when they need them, despite having a lot of shots, they either have to revisit their system, because that's kind of what happened to them last year in the playoffs, or you may need to make a change behind the bench, whether it's assistant coaches, head coach, whatever it is. And again, that may sound crazy for a team that's at 103 points, but the expectations for Carolina are really high, and they should be. And it's a it's a good time in an organization when the expectations are much, much higher than what they were. This is a team that was, you know, at or near the bottom of the league for a long time, uh, mediocre for a long time, and it's nice to see them in a, in a contending spot. But there is some pressure on them this year. So let me know your thoughts. What does the successful postseason look like for Carolina? Do they have to reach the Final Four? Do they have to reach the Final? Or is it Stanley Cup or bust? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and all your support. I will talk to you again soon.